In this video, we'll be investigating minimum sample size problems. So suppose we're about to draw a sample from a normally distributed population where sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. And we might want to estimate the population mean mu to within some amount m with 95% confidence. So we might want to estimate the population mean within 10, or within 150, or within 0 0.000001, or what have you. That amount simply depends on the problem at hand. But the question we're asking ourselves here is, how large of a sample size is required to make that happen? So our first point to note here when we're figuring this out is that wanting to estimate mu within m is the same as wanting the margin of error of a confidence interval to be no more than that amount m. So our 95% confidence interval margin of error looks something like this. So this was our 95% margin of error, our 95%, and I'll just call it my MOE, okay, my 95% margin of error. And I need that to be less than or equal to m. And so at this point, we're just going to use a little basic algebra. Square root of n's coming up here, m's coming back down here. We're squaring both sides, and what do we end up with? This formula. Now, this is our formula for our sample size that we need to make this happen. Now that 1.96 is depending again on that 95% confidence. 95% confidence is a very, very common one that we use, but we might want to change that. We can change that to whatever we like. Maybe 99%, maybe 90%, maybe 63.23%, two thirds, 63 whatever. So if we want to do that, how are we going to do that? Well, we simply change that 1.96 to the appropriate Z value. So to change the confidence level, we change that Z value. And in the general setting, if we want to estimate mu within some amount m with 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence, using the notation we've used previously, this is our general form here. Z alpha over 2 times our sigma over m, square the whole thing, and that's the sample size that we need. So let's take a look at an example. If we are sampling from a population with sigma equaling 30, how large of a sample size is required if we wish to estimate the population mean mu within 2 with 95% confidence? Well, we get our formula for n, and we say, well, we've got a lot of things here. This within 2 is the same as saying my m is 2. My sigma is given up here, and, well, I'm pretty much home free as long as I know what this 95% confidence means in terms of my z value. And in fact, I do that we need our z alpha over 2. That's going to be 1.96 for 95% confidence, and I multiply that by 30, and I divide by 2, and I square the whole thing. And then I get an n, that's bigger than or equal to, 864.36. Now, I need to round up here. n, sample size, is a whole number. And I need it to be at least this. So 865, 865 is my minimum sample size that is required. Okay. Let's see what happens if I change that confidence level to something a little bit bigger. Let's say we change that confidence level from 95% to 99%. The only thing that's going to change is my 1.96 is going to change to a different value. So let's see, what about 99% confidence? If I want that, well my n has got to be bigger than or equal to my z alpha over 2 for 99% confidence. Hopefully we remember that, but we can look this up on a computer or on the table. That's 2.576. We multiply that by 30. Divide by our m, which is 2, square the whole thing, and I get n bigger than or equal to 1,493. 1,493.05. So I need to round up and say that the minimum sample size required is 1,494 observations. I need 1,494. That's my minimum sample size. Okay, note that that's a little bit bigger than 495% confident. When I want to jack up the confidence level to 99% here, I'm going to need more observations, more information uh, to get my margin of error down to that level. So let's look at a couple of points to sum up here. First of all, this is typically used as a rough approximation. We don't necessarily run out and get exactly 1,494 observations. The desired margin of error that we come up with there might not be practical. It might not be possible to go get 1,494 observations from a time perspective or from a money perspective. We might have to adjust our study plans or possibly even abandon our study plans after finding out what sample size would be required. And of course, this sigma, the population standard deviation, is not usually a known quantity. 
And so we might have to estimate that from previous studies or what have you, but it's okay in this setting because pretty much what we're doing is just getting a rough approximation of the sample size that is required.